What is good YouTube? What's you here with a video on the Final Fantasy 7 Remake. I was lucky enough to get a hold of this video game early, courtesy of Square Enix. So technically you could say this is a sponsored video. Everything I'm about to say in this video is my own opinion. I was just gifted the video game early and I didn't want to rush a video out so I've taken a good few days. I've spent over 30 hours completing the story. I will be spending a lot more time on this game so let's get into it. So there will be spoilers throughout. I'm going to do a bit of a ending explain and going over my general thoughts of what I thought about this video game. For So careful for spoilers. So this video game is hard to review. It's one of the hardest reviews I'm ever going to have to do because it's been such a long time since I played the original Final Fantasy game. But not only that, throughout the game, you realize that it's not really a remake, although it is a remake, although it isn't, although it is. So, if we ever get to the 100,000 subscriber mark, I will be giving away something so darn cool. So I'm going to focus on the ending and explaining the ending because there was a lot of confusing things that you didn't even realize until you listened to what I'm about to say. So, let's break it down. So right at the end, we're talking about chapter 18, the final chapter. And it's worth saying that throughout this game, they give you a lot of PlayStation trophies. 44% of trophies without trophy hunting. So let's get into it. So right at the end, we are introduced to a black-haired soldier who looks really like Cloud. And at first I thought it was Cloud, but it isn't. It's Zack. It is Zack, although he looks like Cloud because he literally is a spitting image of Cloud. He's got the the sword buster as well so if you've not played the original final fantasy 7 game you'll be thinking who is this character what is he doing here but i like the way they've made this game in the sense that you can still understand most of it without playing the original so zach's final stand is pivotal to a pivotal moment in the final fantasy 7 universe where we see Zack Flair, previously a popular first-class soldier just like Cloud of Shinra's electrical power company. Yeah, the whole villain of this video game is electric company. He attempts to return to Minga to see his love, Aerith. The scene serves as a critical story element for both Zack Flair and Cloud Shrine and symbolizes the hero's fight for freedom. The scene is optional in Final Fantasy VII and fairly short, but it is being elaborated on in later installments of the Final Fantasy game, most notably in the Crisis Core in Final Fantasy VII. Within the game, it's clear that he didn't die, or he did die in, in this variation of the game. I, I'm going to say he didn't die. But in the original story, he died during a battle against Shinra. But he didn't die in this one and that's where cloud strife got his sword buster from it was from zach and has the abilities he would only have with zach's death not to mention the aris brief interaction with the spectrum of zach and it's worth noticing and saying that she was zach's girlfriend implying he's dead in their story it appears in final fantasy 7 remake it's not just playing one notion implying there's multiple timelines in this cinematic universe or at least it is because there's a lot of flashbacks flash forwards throughout this whole video game and at least for me it's delivered in such a way that you think he is just dreaming but really there's a lot there's multiple timelines happening at once throughout this so one thing that's pretty cool throughout this is the whispers throughout the video game are trying to push a story of destiny that has to happen that's why they get involved throughout the whole game you know and barrett dies the whispers bring him back because barrett's got to be alive so they are there to make sure that destiny is not interfered with throughout the whole game now what i find funny is it's like a lot of final fantasy 7 fanboys seem to think they know what is coming it's like Guys, this ain't a remake, so you don't know, ain't got any clue. So, Sephiroth, who is he? Where is he? What is he? Well, if you haven't played the original game, you've got no idea, and he just keeps randomly appearing. So, he was once a soldier named Sephiroth who was the best, better than the rest. But when he found out the terrible experiment that they made him do and made him anticipate in, he began to hate Shinra. And then over time, he began to hate everything throughout the game. He wants to destroy the planet. But it's not really clear why he wants to destroy the planet. So Sethroth in the first Final Fantasy VII, in the original, was the main villain and one of the major antagonistics in the whole entire extended universe. In spin-off series, Sethroth is 
very important and is essentially Cloud's Strife arch nemesis and is seen as a symbol of Cloud's troubled past and haunts him. Sethor is a former renewed soldier. That's why at the start of this game, he thinks he killed him five years ago. So it, it all makes sense, but I think they failed at, in some capacity to explain parts that you would need because obviously when they make when a company makes a video game, they're not just making it for like old fans, but they want to bring new fans to the organization, to the genre, so to speak. Because it might be an RPG, but it's like an anime RPG. So it's as seen as a, a symbol of Cloud's troubled past. Sethroth is a former renewed soldier. He became twisted while Sethroth is the main villain. He isn't central focus until much later in the game after Cloud and his allies leave Migar to find him before his fall from grace. Sethroth is one of the most successful stories of Shimmer's Electrical Power Company soldier program. His success in the field of the battle. During the conflict surrounding Shimmer's bid for global domination led to his status as a celebrity war hero with a poster boy for both Shimmer's military and the company soldier program. Learning of his true origins drove him insane, chasing and causing him to be drived into insanity by the desire to destroy the world. So Sethroth is briefly a party member during flashbacks and is both the penultimate boss and the final boss. What does Sethros actually want in this game? It's kind of confusing that it doesn't really tell you. So in my interpretation, he wants to be a god. He wants to be omnipotent. He wants to be the Thanos. Okay, I'm not going to say that because he's greater than Thanos um, of the Final Fantasy VII world. So he wants to absorb the life stream from the promised land. We see in a flash scene, it's flash forward scene at the end of game by planting a deadly event to wipe out essentially the world with a meter hitting the planet he will absorb the power or at least he will try to do that uh, but he probably will fail the promised land is where he wants this to take place but he will fail he really will fail so throughout the game i don't know if you picked up on it there is multiple timelines from different stories and they're trying to show you that there's more to this game than you actually thought. So chapter 18 is where it gets really confusing in a way for some people. Sethroth invites Cloud to fight Destiny. It's all about Destiny now. Now, so the final boss is against Harbringer. And essentially, you, you got to fight Sethroth at the end. But like, like The team thinks you've killed him, but you haven't. Each fight here is from a future timeline, and this backs up the theory that there are multiple timelines. Now, if you do analyze each of the villains of the final boss, it says an entity from the future timeline that has manifested into the present day. It fights barehanded to protect a future that gave shape to it. So by now, you should know things aren't going to go down how they went down in the original game, which is cool because it can bring new players to this game. Right at the end, Sethor says to Clown, something like, you have seven seconds, what are you going to do with it? Now, in my opinion, I don't think the video game creators knew what they were doing here because it's like you've got seven seconds, but then nothing really happens. So we are left with the unknown journey. What is the unknown journey? Surely no one knows. The unknown journey will continue. So it's basically impossible to predict where Final Fantasy VII is going forward in terms of gameplay, in terms of plot. And this makes for a really awesome storyline going forward after this game when they do announce it. And it also discontinues the theory that they were going to divide this story into multiple games. There was a theory that there was going to be three to four games. As he said, it was going to be episodic. It is going to be an episodic story, but it's not the original story, which is interesting because a lot of diehard Final Fantasy VII fans, I've played 8, 9, 10. I've played the majority of them, but I've not played Final Fantasy VII for such a long time. Think about it now. I, sh I probably should have replayed Final Fantasy VII before I played the, re the remake. So it is interesting how there's multiple timelines going. They are going to get Seth Roth from wherever he is obviously they've just left Midgar which is pretty interesting and it is pretty cool how there's a lot of easter eggs every freaking where it is pretty cool how in the sword buster cloud strife you see the material in it it's just the little things throughout this game is insane and that's why i say it's the hardest a video game to review and i haven't really reviewed it i've done the end and explain as i really do like doing them so it is pretty darn awesome now uh, overall I think this game would be 25 to 30 hours if you just want to do the basic story. There is so uh, you could literally make a movie out of the cutscenes. There is 
at least, I'd say, five hours worth of cutscenes. It is freaking insane. There is a bunch of side quests, which is pretty cool. I will be going back to replay this. I really like Tifa. Tifa in this video game was freaking insane. So where is this game going next? I, I guarantee no one knows. There's, there's literally no one knows where it's going. There's cool things like in 7th Heaven, you can play darts. And if you actually become the leader, you get a trophy. There's loads of cool things like they do in other video games. Like there's there's music vinyl to collect. There's so much added stuff to do in this. And I am going to replay this game on a harder mode. I really think this game would be pretty hard to platinum. But I can see some people have already done it. So guys, let me know down below your brutally honest review of this video game. Now this is more of an end explainer. I might do another video called something like my brutally honestly review of final fantasy 7 remake i've got a lot of thoughts about this game i think it is freaking insane i would give it a perfect meta score but i don't really care for meta scores i do think this game is freaking perfect so good i did notice a few bugs here and there but i'm not gonna like put the score down just because of bugs because they didn't really change anything of the main narrative story or the experience for me so like always guys let me know down below what did you think of this video game i think it's freaking insane i love the ending i love the fact that no one knows what's coming up next and it is a remake but it's not a remake but it is but it's completely different to what anyone actually thought was coming is zach going to appear in the next video game i'm thinking he will appear somewhere but it is interesting how cloud's got his sword but he didn't die how he did in the original one but it is so freaking insane 23 years later if you compare the graphics to the original ff7 to the ff7 remake it's freaking insane so like always guys please like subscribe and comment and i'll catch you in another video very soon catch you later